Hello, Amanda. It's nice to see you again. I think we met several years back because there was a family history of periodontal EDS and you had features of periodontal EDS as well. Yes. And we saw you together with a periodontal expert from Innsbruck, Austria, because the genetic testing for the condition had become available. And I was wondering what your experience were of that appointment and also later on when the diagnosis of periodontal EDS was, was made in yourself. I was actually really pleased as a family member that we'd actually got a final um, diagnosis um, and actually learnt what we had um, was actually a name um, for it. So obviously we've been struggling um, as children growing up with our mouth, with our teeth. Um, so it was quite, we was quite pleased um, to actually have a name um, to what we'd got and quite a few of our family members actually all had the same thing. So it's nice to meet you all. And I was wondering, because of course you mentioned, well, it was good to have a diagnosis and actually have a name, but I was wondering, potentially already in childhood, but also after diagnosis, what are the challenges you have experienced with, with periodontal EDS as a diagnosis? Our challenges have got worse, I think, as we're um, getting older. Um, so the challenges won't ever go away. I just think as we're getting older, they they are getting worse. Um, so even though we have got periodontal EDS, um, it's not got better since we've been diagnosed. Um, it is getting worse. We're still getting problems with our teeth and our gums. Uh, we're still losing our teeth um, as family members. Um, I'm quite lucky because I suppose I haven't lost as many teeth as what my sister um, and other family members have. Um, but I do get really bad receding gums and bleeding gums and toothache and, and my teeth are quite uh, loose. Um, so I suppose even though we have had diagnosis, we're still ongoing um, issues. And do you, apart from the teeth and sort of gum recessions, do you also have other problems that you experience? Yes, terrible bruising um, to our shins, um, which is really sort of from below my knees down to my ankles. Um, my bruising's getting worse. It's sort of spreading onto my feet and coming to the back of my legs now. Um, so it's not even being knocked that I'm getting bruises now. It's um, the back of my legs. It's just appearing. Um, so I don't know why. So even to walk now, it's sort of uncomfortable because the bruises are there. So it just feels that you're constantly, uh, it's sort of hard to explain, but when you're walking, you can feel the bruises um, we can just feel them in your shins and the back of your legs. So I'm constantly aware. So um, literally every minute of every day, I'm constantly worrying in case someone's going to hurt them, or my dog's going to walk into my legs, or if I'm going to catch them. Um, they look ugly. Yeah, so that's hurt. another big problem for you. It I'm is horrendous. It is horrible. Yes. So it's important to understand that periodontal EDS doesn't only affect the teeth and the gums. You would say no no they affect your whole body from pains to like i said the bruising um yeah and as a female well same as a male my son's only 26 and he's got terrible bruising to his shins um but as a male it doesn't phase him because he's got hairy legs so it sort of blends in a bit more um but as a female you know if you want to wear a nice summer dress i mean i suppose we're quite lucky so we can wear long dresses um, at the moment, but you know it is it is a you know it's horrible, and um, you know I do get upset about it. You know I you know I can't go out. Everybody looks at your legs, and I'm constantly looking at people looking at my legs. I suppose um, because how do you sort of explain what your legs are? You know I tell people it's Ellis Danlos syndrome, um, but they like look at me and say, well, "What's that?" And I just say, "Oh, oh it's a collagen." Um, um, thing that I was born with um, but they're just getting worse and worse and, and my mum's legs are just awful um, and yeah. bless her hers are getting worse. Amanda thank you for um, explaining how it has felt for you so far with uh, having periodontal EDS um, um, what has anything helped you has anything helped or can you sense a change? Uh, yes um, the awareness of obviously periodontal EDS and EDS as it's you know, the self, 
obviously more people are aware that the leaflets and things that are coming out now, um, obviously it's on Facebook, you know, it's more aware um, on the internet. So things that, you know, that are happening and obviously, you know, Fleur sort of going through everything, you, you know, there's more professionals that are being more aware of, of actual um, EDS, but it just needs to be more known. So obviously more professionals need to be aware because I think they know that there's so many different um, areas of Ehlers Danlos syndrome and obviously periodontal EDS is the newer um, one that's being found. So it is still new. So Amanda, what would you like to see change for yourself personally in the future? What would help you? Um, I definitely feel that that we need to see a um, dentist who does um, or who is aware of Ellis Danlos syndrome. Um, I feel like when I go to the dentist, I get treated like a young child rather than an adult and be told I've not brushed my teeth properly um, as they are receding when they bleed. Um, so I do feel that seeing um, a dentist who, who is aware would really greatly help me because I get quite anxious about going to the dentist. Um, and also the bruising. Um, I do get really um, anxious and feel quite upset on a daily basis uh, with my bruising. It really affects me. Um, I get conscious I'm going to knock them all the time. Um, if I could walk around with big shields around my um, legs, um, I would, because I, if, if I knock them, I'm so frightened that they're going to burst open and bleed because they do swell up, they get hot to the touch. The bruising is just horrendous. Um, and they look really, really ugly. They just look horrendous. And I'm just so conscious, so conscious that people are looking um, at my legs. And there's no way you can cover them up apart from wearing trousers all the time, um, which most of the time I do. Um, so in the future, I would like um, if there is something that could be done with that, even if it's leg makeup, to be taught how to do professional makeup to cover them up, um, or if there's some sort of operation or something, I would I would just be able to try something. Um, I would, you know, it, it even be, you know, the first person to try an operation, see if they could get rid of the bruising. I, I'd be that sort of person because, you know, to to make someone's life feel better over something so ugly. Um, you know, my mum's never would never wear a dress. It's just always in jeans because her legs are way worse than mine. It's all on her feet. Uh, so she won't wear sandals. Um, you know, it's a big thing. It is a big thing, especially for a female. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for telling us your situation, your story, your experience, and hopefully we can all learn and move on to a better future as well for yourself and for people with periodontal EDS. Thank you so much. Thank you.